I saw All a right. girl ushers you into an adjoining room where smoke from an open charcoal fire spirals up to the roof, filling the air with its pungent aroma. You seat yourself at a round oak table, and the girl brings two plates loaded with broiled gorka steak and roasted parsnips. Two tankards of ale serve to wash down the feast, with Bane, which Bane Dunn, in a generous mood, pays for with twelve silver loom. Having satisfied your hunger and revived your strength, you may restore any endurance point lost on your adventure so far. You bid Bane Dunn good night and retire to your room. Well, we do not have a scratch, so yeah. Yeah. The room, which overlooks the courtyard and stables, is small yet surprisingly clean and comfortable. You sleep well, but you are rudely awoken at dawn by the clang of a brass handbell. Ryuk's wife is walking around the courtyard, ringing it for all she's worth. Daybreak! Daybreak! All awake! All awake! She cries, her voice only slightly less piercing than her bell. Quickly, you wash and dress before gathering together your equipment and heading for the stables. Bainton is already there, having risen before dawn to prepare the horses. And get out of being awoken by that noise. <laughs> the sky is cloudless and the air is warm and still as you ride out of Chardi. Open grasslands stretch before you, broken occasionally by the low, whitewashed farm buildings and peasant dwellings. It is noon when you arrive at a mass of standing stones that line the highway approaches to the village of Fair. Fair, Fair, whatever. Bainton recalls a local legend that the Black Sakan of Vesagonia once came to wage war on the defenseless inhabitants of Fair. Fair. Who had no army. The besieged people offered up prayers I to think the it, I think it's fair. Fair. Thank you. The besieged people offered up prayers to the goddess Ishia, who was sufficiently moved by their plight to cause wicked Vesagonians to become petrified right where they stood, clad in full armor and clasping their weapons. It strikes you that the Fians may very soon have cause to pray for Ishia's help a second time. A mile beyond beyond the village you see a cloud of dust on the highway. Do you wish to use hunt mastery? Yes. Yeah. Using your improved Kai Mastery, you focus on the distant dust cloud. It grows larger and sharper as your telescopic vision magnifies the image. That's awesome. You see a patrol of Anarian cavalry riding towards you, led by one who wears a crimson cloak. You count 20 lances, each of them bearing a small flag embroidered with the arms of Tahao. Do you wish to read forward to meet these soldiers, or to avoid them by hiding behind the standing stones? Well, they're an Aryan soldiers, and uh, they're on our side, so let's just not meet them. If we hide and they find us, they'll probably find that pretty suspicious. So let's just um, greet them yeah. in a friendly manner. And you agree, Kimmy? Yep. Okay, just want to make sure. Slowly, the cavalry draws nearer. The faces of the soldiers are stern and unsmiling beneath the peaks of their winged helmets. The leader, a sergeant, makes a signal and the horsemen change formation, drawing into a circle that quickly closes around you. State your business here, bellows the sergeant. Why do you ride to Tahao? At first you are suspicious of their identity, but your basic Kai Sixth Sense tells you that these men are genuine Anarian, ra Anarian rangers. Do you wish to tell the sergeant the real reason you are riding to Tahao? Do you have an invitation and wish to show it to him? Or do you wish to demand the, uh, what right they have to hinder your passage to the capital? Yeah, yeah I see. So let's just show it to him. Uh, yeah, we should probably show it before he goes here, me on us. The burly sergeant snatches the parchment from your hand and studies it carefully. While raising his head, he asks how two Northlanders came to possess a personal invitation to one of Tahao's most respected households. When Baden explains your meeting with Lothar and how he was once a student of Chiban, her husband, the sergeant somewhat reluctantly accepts your story and returns the invitation. Stay on the highway and make sure you reach Tahao by sunset, he says as he signals to his troops to let you pass. Enemy scouts have been sighted in the hills south of the capital. If you're not inside the city walls by nightfall... He draws his fingers quickly across his throat. You thank him for his advice and watch as he and his troops wheel away and ride south. You park at the invitation and glance apprehensively at Bain Dunn before pressing on with your own journey north. Hmm. I'm writing down that enemy scouts have been spotted south of the capital. Yeah. It is late afternoon when you see the Tahao Hills. They appear like a mirage on the horizon, shimmering beyond the haze that rises from the sun-baked plains. Without stopping for food or rest, you hurry across the hot grasslands and follow the highway as it ascends towards the mouth of, the pa of a pass. A stone watchtower guards the entrance to the hills and a cluster of whitewashed huts lies around its base. Do I wish to use pathmanship? Yeah. yeah. Your senses tingle with the premonition of danger. 
You are sure that the watchtower and huts conceal an enemy lying in ambush. You tell Bainton your fears and he looks ahead, his keen eyes narrowing. But the pass is dire without, with the gathering dusk and he cannot detect anything unusual about the settlement except that it appears deserted. If we avoid the pass, we'll have to make a wide detour and rejoin the highway at a place deep in the hills, he says, scanning with Shadow Highlands. Even if we don't get lost, we'll be lucky to reach Tahoe by nightfall. Do you wish to avoid the settlement or to go through the pass? But so, detour or risk? Well, I would say detour. Risk. The other, on the other hand, we have to reach Tao before night, so... No, and you just became the tiebreaker, Warlord, so... So, yeah, I'd have to say risk. You enter the pass, uh, pass side by side, galloping your white and narrow steeds along the rubbish strewn road that winds its way through the deserted settlement. As you pass the watchtower, a chilling howl rises from the shadows behind the huts. Then, like demons from a nightmare, a host of snarling gyaks burst into view, riding from the hiding place astride giant doom wolves. They thunder towards you on either side, shrieking and thrusting their spears at the darkening sky. Give an air roll the die. Poor little gyaks. Seven. The highway twists like a restless snake as you gallop headlong through the darkening Tahoe Hills. The unholy baying of the doom wolves draws steadily closer as you fight desperately to keep your tired horse ahead of the ravening pack. Three miles from the Watchtower settlement, the fastest pack may but draw level with you as you race along a dry water course. Their eyes and fangs glint evilly in the moonlight as they cut across your path, forcing you to stand and fight. The doom wolves howl and the gear riders cackle with glee as they hurl themselves upon you. You lash out at a grey-skinned rider, cleaving his grinning head in two, and swing your arm back just in time to dispatch a doom wolf that is leaving to watch your face. All around you the snarl and screech and press of bodies threaten to overwhelm your senses, but you are a Kai master, and in the heat of battle, your nerve is ice cool. Grimly, you fight with a speed and skill that leaves a dozen dead in as many blows, but you do not fight alone. Bainton rears into view, flashes of flame spurting from his fingers with a crack like a whip that echoes above the din of combat. Then another wave of wolf riders appears. They charge into the fray, driving a wedge between you and your companion. A black sword cuts the air less than an inch from your scalp, but you deal its wield a fatal blow before you can strike a second time. He falls, yet his doom wolf mount leaps up and clings to your horse, its claws buried in the saddle leather, its foaming jaws snapping at your throat. You must dispatch this beast quickly before it drags you both to the ground. You're fighting a doom wolf. And... Oh, and since you have animal control, you can add two to your combat skill during this fight, because you are messing with it. And... Let's see, that would mean... How much your combat skill on? 27 plus 2 to uh, creatures who aren't uh, immune to psychic attacks. Yeah. It's not. Wait, huh. you have 15 normally, right? Yes. Yes. Plus the sword, that's 23. Yeah. Plus shield, that's 2. Yes. Plus 2 from the, your helmet. Yeah. Plus 2 from your psychic powers. Yeah. Plus 2 from animal control, that's 31. Yeah. Okay. Bam. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, roll the die, given here. 9. Right, you look at the beast and then promptly shove your sword deep into its throat. It is an experience that it cannot survive. Yeah, sort of an obvious thing, but yeah. <laughs> the, de the dead doom wolf drops heavily to the ground and your horse rears you up on his hind legs, churning the air with his forehooks, which strikes like steel hammers amid the remaining wolf riders. More than one end it stays with your horse's hoof print stamped upon its shattered skull. Ow. A Damn. A gap appears and you see Bainton gallop past, his loose rope streaming out behind him like a pair of blue wings. You dig in your heels and urge your brave horse after him, fleeing the battleground as yet more of the wolf riders loom into view. The wolf riders give chase, but their pursuit is half-hearted and you have covered less than a mile when you hear the Giax call off their hunt. They console themselves by hurling threats and wild curses at your backs as you disappear swiftly into the dusk. The highway emerged from the hills at a village called Barta, situated on the edge of the Tahau Flats. The flats consist of fields of cultivated crops forming a fertile market garden two miles wide where it is farmed right up to the banks of the great moat that encircles the capital. Barta is deserted. Its male inhabitants now shelter within the city walls, whilst the women and children have travelled south to the safety of Navasari. 
As you leave the empty town and descend onto the flats, you catch your first awe-inspiring glimpse of the ancient city. Tahao, an ancient stronghold containing a vast city, is a formidable and wondrous sight in the moonlight. The imposing walls and towers of red stone and grey rock assume the softening sheen of velvet, and the city is often referred to as the Velvet Fortress. Beyond the towers and high curtain wall, you can see a thousand spires and minarets, grouped as thickly as the trees of a forest. Tiny lights twinkle in countless windows and portals, adding to the splendor of the mighty capital. Near to the city's south gate, the highway is flanked by, a beacon, by beacons, which illuminate those who approach the gatehouse. A drawbridge spans a moat of black water, and as you ride across, a bell tolls from the portcullis arc ahead. To civilian riders at the south gate, yells a soldierly voice. Raise the postern, shouts another. There's a clatter of chains and a scraping of stone. You watch the portcullis, expecting it to rise, but it does not move. Instead, a narrow portal opens at the base of the wall, and an armored guard steps from the shadows. He motions you to enter, and you follow Bainton along a corridor of stone, leading to a secure enclosure. You glance upwards to see the faces of a dozen soldiers, peering down at you from behind a parapet that encircles the high enclosure walls. All of them grasp loaded crossbows, which they train on you as you move. Then a small gate creaks open, and two guards appear armed with broad, broad-bladed spears. Who are you? One demands in a gruff tone. Why do you seek entry to the how? Do you have an invitation you wish to show them? Do you wish to tell yeah. the guards that you have come to offer your service in defense of the city? Or do you wish to say that you intend to enter the Tahoe Cauldron? Show them the invitation. And we shall do so. Yes, show them the invitation. The guards inspect the invitation, the expressions conveying the doubt that the signature it bears is genuine. They order you to dismount, and one of them hurries off to summon the gatehouse commander. Fortunately, when he arrives, he recognizes Lawfer's mark and allows you to leave the enclosure, although he impo impounds both your horses. You protest and demand that they be returned, but to no will. Orders of the Senate, says the commander of Handley, an emergency decree. All horses belong to the civil population must be delivered into the care of the garrison stables until the state of emergency is lifted. Fair's fair. We can call it that, yeah. Well, they might need them in the, in the battle, so... I would imagine that's why. Reluctantly, you allow the guards to take your steeds, and as they're being led away, the commander hands you each a piece of vellum stamped with a date and a number. Receipt, he explains, his toast noticeably more friendly. You pocket your receipt. But you, you have a receipt for a horse now. It's a special item. Let me see. Uh, bum, 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 bum. And are about to walk away when he calls out, Report to the Citadel first thing in the morning. You'll be allocated your battle position for when the enemy attacks. 